Hey Tank Watchers, Jack Byer here with NASA Spaceflight. Welcome back for another weekly Starship update. First up, as usual, a word of thanks to Mary, at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. She's a NASA Spaceflight team member and Boca Chica resident who relentlessly documents Starship development, day in and day out. All of the footage you're about to see is from Mary, unless otherwise noted, so thanks, Mary. So what happened this week? Let's start with Starship serial number eight. The LR-1600-2 crane that I lovingly call Tankzilla was moved back to the build site after having been used for nose cone installation. I'm very curious why they chose a crane that seemed like such overkill for this task and how the nose cone installation process will go for serial number nine. Later on that same day, November 3rd, SpaceX conducted a cryogenic pressure test of the LOX header tank contained in the freshly installed nose cone. That test appeared to be successful, but we got no official confirmation that it was or wasn't. With that cryogenic pressure test completed, SpaceX is set to move on to a series of static fire tests. We expect multiple static fires with multiple different engine configurations to be conducted ahead of serial number 8's 15 kilometer flight. Residents of Boca Chica Village got the usual hazard warning on Saturday the 7th, indicating SpaceX was targeting the next day on the 8th, probably for some type of static fire testing. However, late on Saturday night, that road closure was canceled, following a recent pattern of SpaceX filing for road closures only to cancel them later. So when will serial number 8's 15 kilometer test flight finally happen? The unsatisfying answer is when it's ready. The previous best guesses were in the first week or perhaps the first half of November, but as dates have slipped closer and closer to Falcon 9's Crew-1 launch out of Kennedy Space Center on the 14th, the prevailing wisdom among those in the know has shifted to be that serial number eight will not fly before Crew-1. So sometime in the second half of November is a good guess. And that is again, if everything goes exactly as planned. Something like another engine swap after a static fire test, or say an issue with flap actuation could pop up and cause the time it takes to get SN8 flight ready to be extended, even potentially to the point that serial number nine flies first, although the likelihood of that is of course very low. Speaking of serial number nine, it's in the high bay and has had both aft flaps installed. I don't know if they plan on installing the nose cone inside the high bay or at the launch site like they did for serial number eight, but on Saturday, a large crane was moved inside the high bay. What it will be used for, we'll just have to wait and see. Next up, serial number 10 stacking in the mid bay is complete. And with serial number nine in the high bay, that makes room for serial number 11 stacking to begin. And so it did. On Thursday the 5th, its mid block stack, a four ring high section of the liquid oxygen tank was moved into the mid bay. That makes serial number eight, nine, 10, and 11 all being worked on simultaneously, which is just so cool. Next up, we've seen various sections for upcoming vehicles, probably either seal number 11 or seal number 12, around the build site this week, including a new thrust dome sleeved and flipped, and a new common dome sleeve. Also spotted this week was Super Heavy number one's LOX stack number three. If that's a little too confusing for you, here you can see on this excellent diagram from Brendan, at Brendan2908 on Twitter, that Super Heavy is thought to have five LOX tank sections. And thanks to Mary's watchful eye, we've already seen lock stacks one, two, and three. With the addition of lock stack four, that leaves only lock stack five remaining, if the final production workflow does indeed end up this way. There are so many parts of the first Super Heavy booster piling up at the build site, including a fuel stack, its forward dome section, and a common dome sleeve. We'll hopefully see the first Super Heavy booster come together rapidly as soon as the high bay is ready for it. Update. While this episode was being edited on Sunday, two super heavy LOX tank sections, each made up of four ring segments, were moved into the high bay using the newly positioned crane I mentioned earlier, which means super heavy construction has officially begun. Next up, a thrust puck with a new, different design was delivered to the build site. In our member discord and on Twitter, Rafael Adame posted this awesome graphic illustrating the differences. He pointed out that it looks like the methane manifold, this part here, seems to be external now, and the downcomer is directly attached to the inverted cone. This will probably help with structural integrity, could result in less heat transfer from methane plumbing in contact with liquid oxygen in the LOX tank, and maybe even reduce the mass of the manifold itself. An excellent catch from Mary, and some cool detective work from Raphael to help decipher what we're seeing. A couple of other items from the last week, Work on pad B seems to have picked up again, if it ever actually slowed down in the first place. It's always good to have a pad B on hand in case of any rapid unplanned disassemblies. 
I can't help but wonder how long it'll be until we see a starship on pad A and pad B simultaneously. Next, the human landing system mock-up nose cone was moved to a new stand. Why? I don't know. And last, several sections of box culvert, shout out to YouTube channel Post 10, have been delivered to the launch site, along with a whole bunch of pipes. It looks like these will be emplaced in a trench leading from the tank farm to the orbital launch pad, probably for some sort of ground support equipment run, but I can't say for sure. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. If you haven't already, hit that like button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support what we do, we've got the NASA Spaceflight merch store with cool t-shirts and other gear, and we've got the YouTube membership program with perks like Discord access, members only emoji, and members only preview videos that go live before the daily updates do. These weekly videos are a work in progress, so let us know what you think in the comments. With your support, we'll keep making this series and everything we do better with every release. And finally, thanks of course to Mary, Boca Chica resident and NASA Spaceflight team member who relentlessly documents Starship development. Thanks, Mary. Okay, that's it this week. Thanks, everybody. Be excellent to each other.